All right, let's take a look at the starting 11 from Pep Guardiola's first ever Premier League match. A 2-1 home win over Sunderland in August 2016 and see where they are now. Willy Caballero. You knew that when Pep Guardiola would rather Willy Caballero, a lad whose arse has probably been splintered by the bench in recent years, keep goal ahead of Joe Hart, the writing was on the wall for the shampoo salesman. Caballero left City himself the following year following the arrival of Edison and could have gone to become first choice somewhere. But why do that when you can just sit on the bench every week at Stamford Bridge making some easy coin? Although he did almost get a chance in the EFL Cup final against his former club last season, but once Kepa decided that it was him calling the shots and not the manager, poor old Willie went back to sit on the goddamn bench. Yep, yeah, that was the night Kepa should have probably been drowned in a bath full of petrol. Bakri Sagna. Oh, Bakri Sagna, what has happened to your career? This is a fellow Pep Guardiola clearly saw as about as much use as three we call cheese. Chucking him out the door in June 2017, he'd eventually find work at Benevento Calcio in February 2018 and then at Montreal Impact six months later. John Stones. This was not a fun season for John Stones. A new £50 million recruit, he struggled a lot producing about as many mistakes in six months as Charlie Sheen would with an open bar and a refusal to use condoms. Stones was a walking disaster that season. I'm surprised the man wasn't drug tested considering he was playing with all the balance of an elephant on kit. But no, he's bounced back, steadied himself and won two league titles. Still faces a fight on his hands to start in this team though. Wouldn't be surprised to see him wind up at Bournemouth or something in a couple of years. Alexander Kolarov. Probably the most serious looking footballer that has ever existed. Honestly, even just breaking into a smile would probably hurt this man's face. Alexander Kolarov was a fine player in his seven years at the Idiot. Impressive how he lasted that long, considering he was initially wanting to leave after six months. But Guardiola put an end to all that, chuck him out the door to Roma in 2017, where he remains still. Gail Clichy. Again, another defender of Guardiola probably wanted to douse a petrol and chuck in a bonfire. Instead, he chose to just make him redundant instead. Far easier way of doing things. At the end of the season, Gail Clichy linked up with Istanbul Basakse here, where he gets to play with the likes of Demba, Ba, Arda Torre, and then Rabinho. Shouldn't he be in jail? Fernandinho. One of the only defensive minded players who Guardiola didn't chuck in a skip. I remember when Fernandinho first arrived at the Etihad in 2013 and I'm not sure people were confusing him with Fernando, but either way, he wasn't getting the credit he deserved. He is now though, incredible footballer into his seventh season at the club, although no doubt spent the month of June banging his head off the kitchen counter once he saw his employers chuck 60 million quid on someone who plays his goddamn position. David Silva, a club legend. David Silva was a dream for Pep Guardiola. This man has been playing the Barcelona way since 2004 for Christ's sake. The 33 year old should nearly have a statue built at the Etihad. An understated world class footballer, one of the best midfielders England has ever seen. And to think, a little over 10 years ago, City fans were having to sweat on the fitness of Joey Barton. And to think David Silva only cost 25 million pounds. 10 million less than Danny Drinkwater. In today's market, th that man in his peak would cost upwards of 150 million pounds. This is his last season at the club, but the man has Premier League legend written all over him. Raheem Sterling. I'll be honest, I did not see Raheem Sterling surviving under Pep Guardiola's ruthless, cutthroat style of management. For God's sake, this is the same man who once sacked off Ronaldinho, the golden boy of Barcelona. What chance does Sterling have? A lad who just scored 60 goals in his first season at the club. He'd also just chucked in a performance against Iceland that was one of the most pitiful things I've ever seen. You could have stuck a dead pigeon on the right wing and it would have done a better job of crossing the ball. I'm not sure how, but Pep has turned this man from a speedster with no end product into one of the deadliest finishers in England. 50 goals in the last two years. It's incredible. Kevin De Bruyne. Again, another dream player already awaiting Guardiola. Let's be honest, it's not as if Pep was inheriting Swansea City now, was it? But how Kevin De Bruyne was chucked in a box and left to rot under the stairs of Stamford Bridge, I have no idea. That golden boy Oscar is currently out the back arse of China, no doubt trying to teach his teammates the goddamn offside rule. While De Bruyne is one of the greatest footballers in the modern game. Nalito. Uh, this one was all on Pep. He signed him. It was a transfer that never really worked out. Six goals in 30 games isn't great. And he was returned to Spain via Sevilla at the end of the season, where he's still flattering to deceive. Sergio Aguero. What more can you say about Sergio Aguero other than, I bet he's glad he never ended up at Spurs. They came damn close didn't sign him and then spent two years trying to get Saito Berahino instead. Which is a bit like being knocked back by Margot Robbie and, and so instead choosing to ask out your goddamn right hand. Aguero is amazing. He's the club's record goal scorer with 232 goals in 339 games. Has won the league four times and yet doesn't make the PFA team of the year very often. And is forced to listen to punters saying that Harry Kane is the best striker in the league. Show some respect to Aguero lads. He'll be heading back to Argentina soon.